Good morning, Bermuda. Members of the media, thank you for joining me today. We are now all aware that COVID-19 has disrupted our school system this previous weekend. Out of an abundance of caution, the Department of Health made the cautionary step to require students and teachers who spent the most significant time with the students indoors to quarantine. These affected schools are St. George's Prep, Paget Primary, and as of yesterday, West End Primary. Despite these actions, I would like to stress to the public that there has not been any students that have tested positive for COVID-19 to date. This morning, I wish to lay out plans and preparations in place to address COVID-19 safety and health protocols in the Bermuda Public Schools. It is important that we continue to keep our students, teachers, parents, and the general public aware of these guidelines. We do not take this situation lightly and will continue to stress and enforce these safety and health protocols. We must operate our schools in strict adherence to the public health guidelines developed by the Department of Health and the Department of Education. Students, teachers, parents, and the broader community must understand that every care is being taken to safeguard our children and community from further COVID infections or community spread. While some may find it inconvenient to wear masks, social distance, wash hands, and stay in your bubbles, these things must be done in order to maintain our relatively good handle on this pandemic and keep our schools open and our children learning. With that in mind, let me outline the following measures that are in place to address this and any potential risk associated with COVID-19 related instances in our schools. Our entry screening protocol. Entry screening and safety and health protocols will remain in place. Staff and students must be diligent with following safety and health protocols. We are urging public school families to adhere to the guidelines and be prepared to answer the daily questions and follow mask wearing protocols. This is the first line of defense in keeping our schools safe. School facilities. The Department of Education continues to provide schools with cleaning, hygiene, and PPE supplies on an ongoing basis. The department has a system in place for monitoring the cleanliness of our school facilities with random inspections. To date, 46 inspections of facilities have taken place. In the event of potential COVID-19 exposure, as what we have experienced this weekend, classrooms and any affected areas are deep cleaned and inspected before students and staff are allowed entry. The Education Emergency Measures Committee. As the safety and health of our students is of paramount importance, at a meeting with the officers of the Bermuda Union of Teachers and the Ministry of Education in October 2020, it was proposed that an Education Emergency Measures Committee, or EEMC, be formed. The purpose of the EEMC will be to provide support and direction to schools for mitigating, preparing for, responding to, and recovery from any COVID-19 related emergency in the public school system. The EEMC will ensure schools are supported appropriately. The formation of this committee is derived from the existence of the EMO or Emergency Measures Organization that takes responsibility when the island experiences a national disaster. Similar to the EMO structure, the EEMC will be chaired by the Minister of Education and comprised of representatives from the Ministry of Education headquarters, the Department of Education, the Department of Health, the unions, and the Department of Communications. The final makeup of the EEMC is being finalized and their initial meeting will take place within the next two weeks. Communications. Parents, you can expect official notification from school principals and administrators in a coordinated method. Official announcements from the commissioner and the apartment are done by way of power school accounts, the department's Facebook groups for parents, the Department of Education's social media network and www.moed.bm website. Updates are also listed in the department's online newsletter, The Scoop. Let me use this opportunity to ask parents to update their power school accounts and join your respective Facebook groups. 
Upon notification from the Department of Health of a COVID-19 related issue, the following will happen. School principals and school administrators will contact the affected staff and parents. Principals will hold Zoom meetings with staff and follow up with letters. Schools will conduct Zoom meetings with school parents. Staff and students will be COVID-19 tested. Information will be posted on the MOED.BM website, the department's social media network, and PowerSchool. A public statement will be issued after the inter internal notices. Remote learning readiness. In the event of a class or year level at the primary or middle school has to transition to remote learning, the department will prepare learning packets. The department will, within 48 hours, provide, based on current resources, laptops for up to four classes to use while students are quarantining. The laptops will be delivered to students during the two-day transition from classroom to remote learning. The Department of Education has prepared guidelines for remote learning by school level. Teachers have received initial training in Schoolology, which is a web-based learning management system that allows schools to administer educational courses and training programs and to track the progress of its users. A Schoolology support team will assist teachers who will have to transition to remote learning. Teachers can use Schoolology to arrange work for students electronically, collect and grade work from students, and return that work to students for quick, high-quality feedback. Schoolology also teachers, allows teachers to create lessons quickly and to differentiate, school, differentiate instruction for each student. Schoolology also for a wide variety of, allows for a wide variety of input formats so students are not limited to producing traditional Word documents. Still, they can provide audio or video recordings to teachers as evidence of their learning. Schoolology also allows parents to track their child's progress easily and communicate with teachers directly. In conclusion, as the Christmas holidays are around the corner, the urge to travel is upon us, and I am urging that travel be limited to emergencies only. Anyone traveling upon return to the island, please note that the health regulations prohibit you or anyone that you live with from entering a school facility until you have quarantined for a minimum of eight days. In closing, I would like to urge our students, teachers, parents, and the general public to understand the procedures outlined above and that they are to be followed in order to accurately provide updates to our schools and on our schools and keep our schools safe and healthy. I want to reiterate the need for us to wear masks, practice social distancing, wash your hands, and keep your bubble small. We all play a critical role in keeping our island safe. Let all of us do our part. Thank you. A concern for parents uh, is that some of the teachers told to quarantine over the past couple of days do not only serve one year group. So PE teachers, art teachers have been quarantined and they move across year groups. We also understand not all teachers in primary schools are wearing masks in all classes. Why aren't teachers um, or why aren't more uh, groups being quarantined if these teachers move across year groups? Well, Gary, it's, a, it's the Department of Health that does the uh, contact tracing and the orders to quarantine are determined from what that contact tracing does tell them. And so that's, that is an order that would come from the Department of um, Health. And if, the, if additional students are, are being requested to quarantine, that's something that will come out of the Department of Health. Um, we trust the Department of Health in their contact tracing to let us know that this is the group that needs to quarantine. And as I stated in my statement, it's being done out of an abundance of caution. And so in, in some cases, it, uh, some, of, some people are coming to us and saying, well, we think it's overkill. And in some cases, some people are saying, why aren't you doing more? But we have to trust the experts that we, that we um, have doing what it is that they're doing. And so when they come and say, this is the group that needs to quarantine, we will follow those instructions until they give us additional instructions. In terms of teachers not wearing masks within classrooms, um, 
if you would uh, kindly point out to me which schools these are, and we will address that because all of our teachers should be wearing masks inside of our classrooms as part of our health and safety um, guidelines. So to clarify, any whether it's P1 through to P6 or middle school, the all te teachers, the, the teachers should, should be, should wearing, be wearing, masks. wearing masks when in the classrooms. Yes. Thank you, Minister. Um, this speaks to something you you uh, you just said in your conclusion that in March, when overseas students came back from university, some we're going to schools to pick up younger siblings. Uh, well, this can be a help to parents. I know some parents immediately took their children out of school when they saw this happening. Um, you've said that anyone traveling upon return to the island, note that the health regulations prohibit you and anyone you live with from entering a school facility until you have quarantined for a minimum of eight days. So essentially, st overseas students coming back who have uh, younger siblings in public schools those children, those younger siblings, will not be going to school whilst their 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 older siblings are quarantining. Is that correct? Well, the as the quarantine works, as 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 it's been explained by the Department of Health on numerous occasions, is it's possible to quarantine in a home and keep people separate. Mm -hmm. So we had some cases where uh, we'll have parents saying, "Well, the, I know so and so's sibling has to quarantine, but another person's sibling hadn't." doesn't have to quarantine and that just depends on the home situation mm -hmm. so if, the, if it's possible to quarantine and I, I think it's important for us to re remember what quarantining is versus isolation mm -hmm. quarantining is that you may have had potential exposure mm -hmm. so you're asked to wear a mask wash your hands frequently social distance that's what quarantining is isolation is if you have tested positive then you must be isolated from people altogether and so when you're quarantining, it's possible to quarantine and remain safe and be in the same household. But the Department of Health will determine that um, when they talk to the persons in terms, of, um, in terms of the contact tracing. What we're urging people to recognize is that in order, for, in order to keep our schools safe, the regulations state that you must quarantine for eight days prior to returning to school. And so what we're doing is trying to remind people of that so they're aware that even if they do have students returning, there is a possibility that um, there could be there if there are students in the local system that are within that household, there's possibilities that they will not be allowed back into school. And I will say there is um, it has something that, ha that that is something that has come up with the government and we're looking at how we can start to track persons returning and if they are associated because um, we've been we've had reports. And um, we're, we're, we're looking to, sub to, to, to confirm those reports that there are persons who have been traveling and but still sending their children to school. Um, we, it's been said, but we're looking to confirm that. But we want to reiterate to people so they actually know that is what the regulations are. So just to clarify, if, a, say, a student with a younger sibling in the same household comes back from uni university, we shouldn't be expecting to see them going and going anywhere near a school until they're quarantine period is up. That, and that, that, is what, that is what the regulations state. Thank you, Minister. Um, other concerns have been raised about students sharing minibuses with very little social distancing, minibuses that, and also minibuses that serve multiple schools, including ones that are now impacted by quarantine. What's been done to mitigate the risk in this situation and have some minibus services been stopped or drivers quarantined? Um, Gary, that's something that I will um, I'll have to follow up on because the minibus operation is something that falls under the remit of the Ministry of Tra the Ministry of Transport. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that I've just just heard from you, so I will follow up with that. But I do know that um, that health and safety protocols are in place for minibuses, and so and those things should be mitigated from the get go. But um, I'll have to follow up on that to see if there is any other additional um, um, guidelines that need to be put in place. Thank you, Minister. And has the news over the last few days caused any distress for children? Are you aware of how are we seeing increased need for any counselling within the schools? Uh, I have not been made aware of that, but um, as you know, the Bermuda public school system is a family and we deal and we talk to each other and handle things as a family. And if there is any additional resources or any additional um, servicing that need to be put in place, uh, we are prepared to do that. We've done it on numerous occasions prior when there's Something, something disastrous has happened at a particular school. You know, perhaps a, a, a student got in an accident and was badly injured and the like, and we've been able to assemble teams to go in and talk to our students. So if that, if, if the, that necessity does come about, we do have the, the procedures and the facilities in place to take care of that. Mm -hmm. And my final question, 
uh, school closures do create a lot of disruption for parents, taking them out of work, etc. Anything that uh, what is government doing to help in those situations is also a little fear about going back to remote learning again. Well, what, as, as we're speaking today, and as as the um, premier and the minister of health has said yesterday, and also you know we had a release on Sunday is. And as I mentioned in my statement, we all have a part to play in keeping our country safe. Um, sometimes um, you, you start to think that the success that we've had in mitigating the COVID has allowed people to kind of lax and, and not adhere. But I'm hoping that, especially within our school system, that this is a wake up call because it is a knock on effect. Um, we have one of our schools, um, when we look at um, um, St. George's Prep, and you have the P2 class being quarantined. That's a knock on effect. One of the P2 students has a um, student's parents as a teacher at another school. So that she's got to, you know, that teacher's now got to be home with the students. So we've got to find a substitute there. Um, the well, One of the students, um, had, they have siblings in other schools. And, you know, so there is a knock on effect. And these are the, th this type of thing can be mitigated very easily by adhering to the protocols. Always look to protect yourself. You do not know what the person in front of you or the person that's around you has been exposing themselves to wear masks wash your hands practice social distancing and keep your bubble small and we will beat this pandemic we just need to do the things that need to be done so we don't need to uh, more more tightening of the regulations that we've allowed we've been allowed to enjoy in bermuda that um the rest of the world other parts of the world have been suffering from so i i, I throw that out there and i really really implore understand why we're doing what we're doing i know it sounds like an inconvenience we've had lots of complaints coming to um the my minister at moed.bm where people were saying you know why would do the children have to wear masks why they can't do this why they can't do that we're safe we're safe we're safe all it takes is one incident and we're going from relatively safe to where we are now and the and and the only way that we can mitigate that is just to stick to the protocols until something happens where the um the fear um COVID has subsided and we're able to return to somewhat of a normal type of existence thank you minister thank you thank you gary seku henderson from royal gazette good afternoon seku <laughs> good afternoon mister how are you i'm fine thank you good good to hear um, so you mentioned in your statement that um, currently no students have tested positive. Yeah. Um, I was wondering, are there any um, tests that are that the ministry is still awaiting, and if so, how many are there? Um, the thing about testing is it's private, mm -hmm. and when, if, one, if there is a positive test, we will be made aware. We won't necessarily be told. I'm not necessarily. We won't be told who exactly it is. We'll just know what school it's in and the things that need to go from there. So. Um, I know they've been testing, testing all weekend. They've been testing, testing, testing. Um, so um, in terms of if there are any other additional tests out there, I cannot answer that question. Um, but if there is a positive test, as I've outlined, there will, be, um, there will be a communications plan in place that will inform the schools, the parents, the, the students, and eventually the general public of what's going on. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, just to clarify, um, I, th I think it's, um, we all understand that, you know, um, even though it's a school, it's not just populated by uh, students and teachers. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering, could you please clarify if um, other members of, st of staff and school, such as possibly custodians or even um, secretaries and people who um, in the administrative sectors of schools are also going through testing? Uh the testing, um, first of all, as you know, testing is completely free. Anyone can go get tested if, if they wish. All you got to do is make an appointment down at Southside and, and go down there and get tested. Um, again, the instructions from the Department of Health is what governs. And so um, they, they'll come and say these are the persons that should be, that, that need to be tested, and those are the persons that will be tested. Um, I cannot say whether anyone else will be told they have to or who gets told because that's the directive that comes from Department of Health. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I don't want to cause any fear or alarm, any, any sort of fear mongering, but um, if um, I suppose, what would it possibly take for, um, for any stronger measures within schools to be taken if necessary? Um, the, I, we believe that our measures that are in place are, are as strong as they can be. Um, if, you, if you have an opportunity to visit the, um, the moed.bm website, the, all of the COVID protocols are listed there. 
Um, you're talking about for each level, it's probably around a 35 page document and it really details every, it details as many scenarios as possible. So we believe that based on the, based on the research that we've done and based on the Department of Health's input, we've come up with very comprehensive uh, protocols for our schools. If they are followed to the T, we should be fine. Um, the problem that we're seeing is as we, we do as we start off following these things and we're mitigating and we're, and we're making sure nothing's happening, people start to get lax and loose. We need to remind them that now is not the time to do that. I see. Um, I think that's everything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Suku. All right, members of the minister, thank you. Members of the media, that concludes our press conference. Thank you.